Hey everyone, today's video is going to discuss rodenol, also R09, and they are, insofar as I can tell, chemically identical and interchangeable. Rodenol is a developer for black and white film stocks. Now, what we're going to develop, discuss today can also largely be applied to Paranol S, which, again, insofar as I can tell, is a chemically identical Rodenol clone. That said, I've used Rodenol, I've used Paranol S, rather, and I found the results from it are not completely identical to those from Rodenol, so I will do an, a future video about Paranol S as well. Rodenol is one of the elder statesmen of the film chemistry scene. It was patented on 27 January 1891 by Mome Andreessen in Berlin and was, if not the first, one of the first liquid developer concentrates to be released to the photography market. I do have some tips here for you on how you can use Rodenol to the best effect. Now, as a quick note, Rodenol is a developer that I truly dislike. It's too active for my tastes and that, especially at 1 plus 25, can cause cloud-like fogging on some film emulsions. There just are some film and chemistry pairings that do not work. And for the films that I've used over the years, Rodenol seems to strike out more often than any other chemistry I've tried. So as I was writing the script for this video, I had just developed four 8x10 Tri-X320 sheets and two 8x10 Zebra plates in Rodinol. And that was before I learned that the Zebra plate, the, the guy or the people who make Zebra plates, recommend against using Rodinol on their plates at all. So all of those shots were pretty much unusable due to fogging. So some when, when chemistry and film in, poorly interact, one of the things they can do is create a fog over the entire film that looks like clouds that aren't there. It's not even, it absolutely ruins a, film, a photo. There's no way that I've ever found to fix it. So doing that with those four Tri-X sheets and two zebra plates was a $184 mistake. Rodenol is not the best developer for every film. And honestly, now that this video is made, it's never passing through the doors of my home again. Personally, I do not have a preferred concentration for Rodenol. I've used it at 1 plus 25, plus 50, plus 75, and also at plus 100 for stand developing. And in general, the one thing that I like about Rodenol and the one compliment I will give it is that it is shelf stable. Rodenol is incredibly shelf stable. I've personally used it with good results by Rodenol standards. Rodenol from an unopened bottle that had sat in a non-temperature controlled storage locker in the desert for more than 25 years. And some photographers reported that it can be used for nearly half a century after the bottle is opened. That said, my experience with Rodenol after opening a bottle is a bit different, and I found that it does start to precipitate solids after around eight months. And that renders it ineffective. Basically, the active chemistry in the developer concentrate forms crystals, then drops out of solution. And all you're left with is this solution that has a weakened or no chemical components of any, you know, usable sort left, and your chemistry doesn't work. Okay, so the chemistry that for Rodenol will change colors as it oxidizes after opening, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's gone bad. As a general tip with all developers, it's always a good idea to take a 35 millimeter film leader and drop it into the working solution you plan to use for your film before using that chemistry on a real film if you have a slight concern that the chemistry might be weak or dead. That little film leader is not going to weaken your chemistry if you want to still go on and use it. You can do that anytime you're developing film. So what you do with that is you take the leader, you drop it into your little little glass Pyrex or whatever of chemistry that you're going to pour into your daylight tank or tray, and you put it in for as long as you plan to develop it. it you, as you develop an eye for this, you might realize after like a minute that the stuff is actually pretty good. You don't need to leave it in for the whole eight or 27 minutes, whatever your developing regimen is. Once Then you take the leader out after you've gotten the information you need, and uh, if you leave it in for the entire developing time, if your leader comes out looking black, then you know that your developing chemistry is good. Go ahead and use it. Let's talk about mixing rodenol. There are two non-stand standard concentrations, 
of 1 plus 25 and 1 plus 50. And then there's also a standard stand concentration of 1 plus 100. Stand developing is basically just you make take a dilute film chemistry, put your film in it, and just let it sit. It's typical stand developing times are 60 to 70 minutes, depending on the chemistry. I usually do 70. Um, but those are your three film developing concentrations. For paper, 1 plus 10 is typically used, although I have used 1 plus 25 on paper negatives and found that the fogging exists with those as well. I would be hesitant to use rodinol at 1 plus 10 for paper unless I was very experienced at doing that. Um, again, rodinol, just not a chemistry I like. Other developer concentrations do exist according to the massive development chart, and I found some of them as 1 plus 200 and 1 plus 500 for stand developing, the latter of which is overnight stand developing. Also, there's a 23 plus 1000 concentration, which is functionally 1 plus 50, uh, because 1 plus 50 at 1000 milliliters is 25 milliliters. There's really no difference between 23 plus 1000 and 1 plus 50. That 23 plus 1,000 concentration, by the way, really adds nothing of value to the data sets for this chemistry. Now, one final interesting concentration that people use is 1 plus 75, and I've tested that many times and found that it provides images with excellent detail, very pleasing grain, but the trade-off is that it does cause exceptionally muddy images. So let's take a look at our sample shot of rodinol. So as always, here are three strips developed from the same negative developed in the different concentrations, 1 plus 25, 1 plus 50, and 1 plus 100. So the 1 plus 25 was developed for 3 minutes and 30 seconds, the 1 plus 50 for 7 minutes, and the 1 plus 100 I stand developed for 70 minutes. Now you can see in the right off the bat, there is a slight variation in the exposure. And, and that has to do with the development. The stand is a bit brighter, which does indicate a bit of overdevelopment. Probably would have been a little bit better at a 60 minute developing time or even possibly a hair less. The exposure between the 1 plus 50 and the 1 plus 25, however, looks very good and seems to be pretty much equivalent. Looking here at the uh, zoomed in portion of the images, what we can see is that the um the grain between the three is well between the one plus 25 and the one plus 50 in the sky the grain is pretty even okay there it's noticeable i can't i couldn't make a decision between these two which one of these i like the grain of more than the other they're they're pretty even if we come over to the one plus 100 the grain is actually a bit more muted and I do tend to find that this is a 4 by 5 negative so that might be part of it but I do tend to find that that on this image at least is a little bit pleasing however that said on the stand developing we do have a little bit of uh, glow around the high contrast areas which is indicative of stand developing so that's not unexpected if we take a look at some of the, the cloud detail here, we can see that the contrast between the 1 plus 25 and the 1 plus 50 is close. There is a hair more contrast in the 1 plus 25, and that really comes through in the clouds where the lighting was pretty even. In the 1 plus 100, we've really lost all the cloud detail. There is nothing in the sky but bright white. Taking a look at the shadows, we see a really interesting story where in the 1 plus 25, there is good shadow retention asterisk in the trees and in the rock in the foreground. In the 1 plus 50, it's pretty similar, but it seems to have, to my eye anyway, a hair more detail and sharpness. That also in the distant background of the 1 plus 25 versus the 1 plus 50, we see that the 1 plus 50 has a bit more detail in the mountains, though there could be a bit of sampling bias there because that central strip also has the most amount of that strip real estate dedicated to the mountains. Looking at the 1 plus 100, however, and this is another hallmark of stand developing, the shadow detail and retention are really exceptional, especially in the rocks, where there is a, just a whole lot more image information in the rocks versus the 1 plus 25 and plus 50 sample strips. 
So also with the OnePlus 100, we do get some nice uh, image detail in what we can see of the distant mountains. But again, because there is a contrast shift there, we get some of that stand halation, I think that's the right term, where there's that there's this little bit of glow around the mountains that looks like fog, but really isn't. So overall, the results are on this are fairly different across the three different uh, developer combinations in different ways. Which one you prefer ultimately is just going to be an aesthetic choice. Uh, honestly, if I were going to use, well, I have like 10 milliliters of road and all left, so I guess I will use it. But I will probably only use it at one plus 100 for stand developing again, because even though there are some of those stand developing trade-offs in that image, overall, that sample portion of this negative really does look the best in terms of sharpness, grain, shadow detail, and overall tonal, uh, tonal range. I do think if we had developed this entire negative as a stand developed uh, chemistry, that the end results probably would have been pretty decent in terms of the cloud dynamic range uh, with, with the whole negative. Thank you everybody for watching. And if this video was helpful, here's a card that will take you to another video you might also enjoy.